Hi, this is QD Video, brought to you by Room Now Live, where keen mind-bending rheumatologists will go to see a great rheumatology meeting in three weeks. But you don't have to go. It's also now a free online streaming internet thing. So go to roomnow.live and register and watch 16 hours of some of the best education and interactive education you'll see. Today's case is pregnancy and dermatomyositis. It's a 25-year-old African-American female who was diagnosed with dermatomyositis about a year and a half ago. Uh, she had a CPK of 10,000, an abnormal EMG, and uh, was put on steroids and methotrexate. Had a sort of slow response, you know, dermatomyositis uh, with steroids, including 80 milligrams of steroids, doesn't always respond right away. It often can take up to 12 weeks to respond. Um, but she did really well and uh, was doing well. And then this year, since she's newly married, she wanted to get pregnant. We told her, can't get pregnant on methotrexate, but can get pregnant on azathioprine. We substituted azathioprine for methotrexate um, and told her to stabilize on azathioprine for two or three months and then get pregnant. She shows up now pregnant and just stopped her azathioprine about a month ago. She says she's six weeks pregnant. And she's doing well, uh, and there's no other issues at hand. So the first question is, can uh, patients with, with polymyositis, dermatomyositis, get pregnant? And since many of them are female, many of them are young, the answer is yes. And the rules are basically the same as that for especially lupus, but really all autoimmune disease, and that is best to get pregnant when you're well controlled. She's very well controlled. Best to get pregnant when you're on uh, pregnancy-safe medicine. She's on pregnancy-safe medicine. Uh, and it's best to get pregnant when um, uh, you're ready to do so and uh, understand the rules. So she's done very, very well. Her CPK has been normalized. Uh, she's on, on, was on azathioprine and now she's uh, really on nothing, prenatal vitamins and whatnot, and she's six weeks pregnant. I think the checklist here is, uh, as I said, be on the safe pregnancy medicine. You probably need to assess her as you would a lupus patient. Uh, um, and the bottom line though is, do patients with polymyositis, dermatomyositis have worse pregnancies as can be seen in lupus, not as much in rheumatoid and other inflammatory arthritis? And the answer is, uh, it seems like it behaves more like a lot of the other inflammatory arthritis rather than lupus because there's not a high rate of pregnancy failures. There's not a high rate of miscarriage. It might be a little bit elevated. Many patients with autoimmune disease have a slightly higher rate of spontaneous um, uh, fetal loss. Um, but again, the, the numbers, when I look at a bunch of series, and they're usually like 20, 30, 50. Here's one from seminars on arthritis rheumatism from last year uh, from Kolstad uh, and colleagues. And they had, you know, what was their, their cohort was, um, they did actually a, 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 a controlled study from the, from actually claims data. Uh, and they really did not show any higher rate of length of stay or complications in uh, women who had myopathy who also had pregnancy. There was also no higher rate of hypertensive disorder. So it doesn't seem this group has a higher rate of complications, doesn't seem has a higher rate of pregnancy, uh, uh, induced hypertension, or of antiphospholipid syndrome. But I would go ahead, I did go ahead and tested her for antiphospholipid uh, tests. I did three of them, uh, the RPR, the lupus anticoagulant, and uh, specific antibodies for uh, anticardiolipin. Uh, and beta-2 glycan protein. And then also test her for SSA, SSB. I don't expect it to be an issue. She's gonna go forward, we're gonna follow her closely. Again, she still just stopped the azathioprine a month ago. She's gonna come back and see me in two months. During this pregnancy, I'm gonna see this patient probably three or four times, including right before she delivers and about a month after she delivers, especially if she chooses to be on no medicine. So the story is, you know, if the mother's health is good, she's got a good chance of making a healthy baby. That's the big and first priority. So, you know, uh, she's good going into the pregnancy. It's likely she's good to be, uh, continue to be good during the pregnancy. And then the issue is what will happen in the postpartum era. Uh, again, you can restart the uh, DMARD therapy if needed at any time at this point. Uh, you could even be more aggressive with DMARD therapy or other therapies since the baby is soon to be already made, organogenesis being completed at eight weeks. So again, the opti the, I'm optimistic uh, and encouraging on this pregnancy and uh, we'll watch her closely. We'll see her at two months, six months, eight months, and then postpartum. 
That's pregnancy and dermatomyositis. Tune in for more QD videos this week.